Welcome to episode 7 of Golo Like a Pro. As you can see, the weather here in Scotland still isn't that great, so this week there'll be a bit less golf and a bit more of a check-in. Now, since I first thought of this last week, I'm even more convinced now that this is a good idea. I need to evaluate where I am with a process like this. It ties in slightly with the mental health that we touched on last week, and even those two words, check-in. Well, they just make me feel like I'm on holiday. I'd like to check in, please. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Just, just through here. Thank you. Here we are. Yep, this will do nicely. Now before we really start to check in, I'm going to show you another quick Phil Kenyon putting drill. This time it's to do with reading the greens. Obviously I would rather be explaining and demonstrating this on a green with slopes and borrows, but here we are isolating in our hotel room in Cancun and we just have to make do. Only thing I could find in English. Phil says, and I've heard it from lots of other sources too, that amateur golfers tend to massively under-read putts. So Phil's tip is to line up your putt, choose the path, and then select a spot about two thirds of the distance to the hole on that path at that distance where you're going to place in your mind an imaginary hole. Now, what the aim is, is to putt through the imaginary hole and into the real hole, which would be really impressive because I can't see a thing. Now this is where it gets a little bit nonsensical because I'm going to line up again, but this time for the imaginary hole. Now, some of you will already be saying that it's going to be the same line because I've put the imaginary hole on the line. However, for some reason, Whenever I make the imaginary hole my target, I do tend to change my line and allow for more borrow. Kind of fries my brain a little bit, maybe I've not remembered it correctly, but Phil says to just try it. Try it the next time in your practice on a green and see what happens. So that's what I will do the next time I'm on a green. Till then, this putt looks pretty straight. Deceptive. So a quick look at the stats for the week. Five foot putts, good numbers, over 80% all week. 10 foot putts, over 80% all week and into the 90s too. And 15 foot putts, all over 70% and one at 80%. So the putts through graph shows an improvement at all distances. The hit left cup trend is down for five and 10 foot putts, but up for 15. And hit right cup trends pretty stable at all distances. Since I started the challenge, the five foot graph looks like this, and so my average through is now up to 78.1%. From 10 feet, it's up to 74.5% since the start of February, and from 15 feet, it's up as well to 69.1%. Streaks this week were a cool 100%. Okay, let's check in properly. How am I feeling about my putting? Pretty good, to be honest. Um, I definitely feel like it's improving. I've got my setup and my routine sorted, so I feel like I've definitely removed um, some of the variables. I know there are still lots more, and believe me, as soon as I hit the cups a couple of times in a row, and I'm like, what am I doing? Um, my brain tries to find all these other possible variables, but at the moment it's going in the right direction, and I just hope that the more aware I become of my putting, the more I can hopefully control it. a wonderful word proprioception which means the perception or awareness of the position and movement of the body now no matter how good your teacher is no matter how well they communicate with you until you can feel what they're telling you and your brain and body agree on it then you're kind of just faking it now I don't mean that in a bad way that's part of learning you can recreate something without fully understanding it but I believe it's only by being open and listening to your body 
that you can hope to have this wonderful feeling where by continually trying to improve, making slight little tweaks and stuff, you might get that moment where after a subtle little change, your brain and your body suddenly realize, boom, that's it, that's what they were talking about. You might have been doing it wrong for years, but all of a sudden it just makes sense to your brain and your body and you finally understand it. I believe that's how we should learn, guided discovery rather than simply trying to copy someone else's experiences. Now that said, I've been showing you someone else's experiences that I'm trying to copy. So let me now take you through a putt and show you what I've discovered. So I grip the putter as I've shown you before and we come up to here. Now in this position I relax my grip. I do this for a couple of reasons. It allows me to feel the weight of the putter head and as gravity pulls it down because of the fulcrum of my fingers it means that the shaft and the grip press up into my hands. They press up into my lifelines and I can feel the contact with the putter there and I know that my grip is good. The second thing is that again just allowing gravity to pull the putter head down uh, I get a nice natural and comfortable deviation in my wrist here. I'm not gripping it too tight and I'm not trying to force it. So again, I just let gravity do the work. And when I'm happy with that, I let the weight of the putter head bring me down into position. So when I come to address the ball, because of everything I've already done, I already have a good amount of bend over the ball. Now, I don't know if it's 45 degrees, uh, but I'm comfortable. And to be honest, not that fussed if it is. So Phil, if you're watching, I'm sorry, but I'm playing it a little bit fast and loose with the 45 degree angle. Now this was one of those eureka moments I was just talking about for me. For years I've been told how you want to have quite a soft grip on the par. You don't want to grip it too tight. Well, I've been playing around with it and I don't think I've been gripping it tight enough. When I've been making my stroke, there seems to be a lot of deviation in the club head because I think my grip's too light. So at this point now, before I make the stroke, I give the club a really good squeeze and make sure that I have total control of the club head. The last thing I've discovered with all the thinking about my stroke, my line, my tempo, my rhythm, is that I've neglected the most important part of the putt. So now with every putt, my main focus is to bring the putter face back to the point of impact square. It may sound really obvious and those other elements may help to do that, but I hadn't even really even thought about it. And now that I have remembered, my putting has massively improved. And that's why I'm so happy with how it's going. I haven't added anything new to my chipping practice this week because to be perfectly honest, I don't feel I've really practiced all the stuff that I added the last time yet. What with the weather and then having to self-isolate when I arrived here in California. I'm quite far behind on my practice to be honest. A shame. So how am I feeling about my chipping? Well, it's a work in progress. I'm not there yet with my chipping. I think I said in the last episode that although my chipping was getting better in my garden back in Scotland, on the course, it was atrocious. And I know that I'm making a big change to my technique, but it seems like I've lost all feel. It seems like I'm just trying to be so mechanical, at least at the moment. Although when I watch the footage back, it seems like I'm not even doing the hinge part right either. But let's be positive. The hands to the target was certainly yielding some good results and I've started keeping my left arm still and connected to my body the same way I do with my putts and that seems to be working out well for me too. Now actually last week my friend Matt, who plays off four, asked me if I wanted a chipping tip. So I was like, yes, of course I do. And it turned out to be that, but with the right arm. So he keeps his right arm still and connected to his body from the elbow up. And he was saying that that transformed his chipping last year. So obviously I'm going to try that. So the next step is just to keep working on the technique, but I want to hit chips into a green. I want to hit chips into a flag so that I can see how the ball lands and spins. I want to try and find my feel again so that I can marry it up with the mechanics. A bit like Kylie in Neighbours. I'd like to marry that mechanic too. Oh, I like her. Now, I haven't practiced my chipping as much as I practiced my putting. So hopefully as I increase that, a little heads up for you here that March's shot of the month may have something to do with chipping as we work our way back from the hole. 
No, March, not May. So in March, I'm hoping to see a big improvement, which will hopefully mean that I can start to feel better about and more confident with my chipping. Well, I broke the basin. So how am I feeling about my workouts? Well, I'm mostly doing the yoga for golfers. I'm throwing in the bodyweight workouts, the resistance band work, and I've also started stretching my hamstrings. But it's not really an area that I've thought that much about. I am loving the yoga. I feel a lot better when I've done it. Um, my hips are looser, I've noticed more rotation, my balance is better, so I guess that means that my core is strengthening. Uh, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. I'm very intrigued to see how I feel after another six weeks of doing it. The bodyweight workouts. I'm glad I started with five reps. Some of the exercises don't feel like they're doing very much and that's fine, but with things like the diamond press up, I'm only just starting to find that a bit easier and I think next week I'm supposed to go up to 15 reps so I'm not looking forward to that. I've no idea if this will be helping or affecting my golf but I'm getting stronger uh, so I'm just going to persevere with it at the moment at least until I think of something better. Just as Whitney will always love you, I will always have tight hamstrings. I've spent years tightening them, playing rugby, football, with bad posture and injuries but I do quite enjoy the stretch and I may be, just maybe, making the most minute progress imaginable. <laughs> now that said, uh, a dancer friend of mine got in touch after watching the show, dumbfounded that I can't get my legs straight past 45 degrees. I guess I'm just going to have to face it. I will never be a can-can dancer. The resistance band is so much more work than I thought it was going to be. But it doesn't just make me work, it also makes me very aware of my positions with regards to my swing. So I kind of love it and hate it. It's very good for keeping my left arm straight, which means that any additional rotation has to come from an increased shoulder turn. So hopefully it's helping the golf, but I haven't really had a chance to play enough to know yet. So that's it for part one from here at Bondi Beach. I'm going to catch up on a little bit of reading before part two. Till then, be good, and if you can't, shout for. Now, pneumonia. Pneumonia. <laughs>